Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we will discuss the last problem of weekly contest 290. Uh, it's a hard level problem. The question name is number of flowers in full bloom. So the question says that we are given a zero index 2D integer array flowers where flowers of i uh, uh, contains uh, two values start and end meaning that the ith flower will be in flum, full bloom from start of i to end of i inclusive. Uh, we are also given uh, a zero index integer array persons of size n where person of i is the time that the ith person will arrive to see the flowers so one array contains the flowers having start and end end time of each flower when it will be in full bloom the second is the the second array is a persons array where ith value in that array represent that it at which particular time that person will arrive now we need to return an integer array answer of size n where answer of i is the number of flowers that are in full bloom when the ith person arrives. Now let's understand with the example, with the given example. So these are the flowers. So the first flower will be in full bloom from uh, time 1 to 6. So you can see from time 1 to 6, this is the first flower. Uh, if, if you see at the in the box at the topmost row so it starts from 1 and ends at 6 if we talk about the second flower it starts at 3 and ends at 7 that means uh, we are talking about the full bloom thing for that particular flower the third one starts at 9 and ends till and goes to 12 so if you see the third row it's from 9 to 12 and the fourth one is from 4 to 13 so it's from 4 to 13 now another array is persons array uh, which is 2, 3, 7 and 11. So the first person arrives at time 2. Now if you see 2 uh, in, in the diagram only in the bottom most row you see the person arrives at 2 and there is only one flower. Uh, if you see at that particular column there is only one flower which is in full bloom. So the, the first index of the answer will have 1. If we see the second person. So he arrives at, he or she arrives at uh, time 3. If we go to 3, we see that there are two flowers which are in full bloom. And which are those two flowers? The first one, because it is in full bloom from 1 to 6. And the second one, which is in full bloom from 3 to 7. And that person arrives at 3. And since it is given that start and end will be inclusive in which the flower and will be in full bloom. So... The, the the second person arriving at 3 will see two flowers the first and second one in full bloom the third one arrives at 7 so again when you go to 7 you see there are two flowers in full bloom the second one has and the last one because second one is from 3 to 7 the last one is from 4 to 13 so 7 is lies between both of these intervals and similar the third person arrives at 11 and we have just two uh, two flowers in full bloom so this was the example uh, if we look into the uh, the the constraints so the the number of flowers will be 5 into 10 raised to power 4 uh, each flower flower of i will have length 2 obviously a start and the end time uh, the start and end time will range from 1 to 10 raised to 9 so these are pretty high values i would say that the range is pretty uh, i would say on the higher end um, if we see about the person length then again it will be 5 into 10 raised to power 4 and again person of i will be 10 to power 9 now the brute force solution that could come to someone's mind is that what we can do is for each person we can traverse the whole flowers array and check whether that person in how many how many flowers basically intersect their full bloom duration full bloom timings with the ith person's arrival time but again that that the time complexity will be pretty high because the total number of flowers is 5 into 10 to, 10 to the power 4 and the number of person is also 5 into 10 to the power 4 so it will go up to 25 into 10 to power 10 to 10 to power 8 so uh, that won't pass obviously so uh, there is a trivial i would say trivial way to do this uh, so let's uh, come to the code and see what could be that particular way i can give you an example first so if in the comments if you see at the bottom of the screen so Suppose we want to find uh, that at a particular time, how many flowers are in full bloom. So what we can do? Suppose we have an array. Forget about the limit. Suppose we have an array. And uh, what? The, let me just do this first. Yeah, we have an array. And suppose the first flower is for, for, for in full bloom from from one to five. Suppose uh, the second one is in full bloom from two to seven, and the third one is suppose from five to 10. Now, the easiest way to do this is that 
we take an array suppose the size of the array is i would say 1 to 11 why i have taken 11 or we can take 10 or 11 because the highest value is 10 so to be on the safer side i have just taken 11 we can go with 10 as well um so suppose these are the indices now the one of the easiest way that we can go uh, to solve these type of questions is as soon as the duration starts for a flower that okay my bloom time has started this frequency array we go to the start index of that frequency array and we increment the count by one so that means if i talk about the array so initially all the values are zero and if we talk about the first flower at the uh, at time t equals to one or at the 1th index it starts blooming so let's make it one if we start from zero index so zero comma one at t equals to one then again dot 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 because rest of the values are zero and it is still bloom it it is in uh, full bloom till time equals to five so now what we can do we can go to the index just after five that is six and we can add minus one to that particular index why minus one because from one to five it's just that we have added that one flower is in full bloom but there is a flower but just after that the the, the flower is not in full bloom mode so one way is that we traverse the area from 1 to 5 and add 1 1 1 1 1 but that that again it's a linear time complexity if we want to do, do it in constant time complexity what we do to do we just add 1 to the starting index and we add minus 1 to the index just after the uh, ending and end, ending time of that particular flower so what will happen it will be 1 1 1 1 and then a minus 1 at the sixth index and again 0 0 0 now let's see what happens in this way if we come to the second flower so what it says it starts blooming at time index equals to 2 so if i just copy this if i come here so again you see 0th index is 0 first index that means one flower is blooming if we come to the two index it's the value at that particular this particular index is zero we add one to it so it becomes one and again dot 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 and then we we need to go to the eighth index because seven is the ending time we need to go to the eighth index and add minus one to that particular index so right now that is zero so we add minus one here and now we are good to go uh, add comma okay then let's come to the third flower i'll just copy this array control c Control V. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That fifth index I'll add 1. The, uh, the current value is 0. And at the 11th index, I'll add minus 1. So I'll add. So it was 7, right? So just dot 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 and I'll add minus 1. Now what will happen? We we have added 1 to the starting time of a full bloom flower and minus 1 just after that flower is out of the full bloom mode now at the last what we need to do we need to traverse the array just take a variable let's suppose int ct equals to zero and just add the current value in that array to this index so what happens and then assign this particular the current value to that index let's see what i am trying to say so the count is initially zero we start traversing the array we add zero that will be zero no worries then we come to the first index we add count we add one to the count it becomes one we assign one to this uh, to this position <coughs> again count is equal to one we come to the second index we add the current value to count it becomes two so we uh, replace it by two then we come to the third index we again oh sorry i missed it okay let's let's add okay now the rest of the values in the middle are zero so what we'll do we'll add zero to count again assign that particular value to that particular index and so on when we come to the fifth index again what will happen we'll add one to the count it becomes three now this the the, the index will be replaced by three and so on now as soon as we uh, come to index number six because you can see so the array representation is not the best way i'm trying to represent here if if we come to the sixth index now you see it's minus one because we added minus one because of the first flag so the count value becomes it was initially 3 now it becomes 2 so this will be replaced by 2 so we keep on doing this we keep on doing this so again uh, if i talk about the eighth index the rest of the values in the middle are zero if i talk about the eighth index again we add minus 1 to count so it was 2 it becomes 1 now so it becomes 1 and at the last if you see it was 2 
it's one now it becomes zero and this is for the 11th index so now you see what it is representing is that <coughs> also the middle values will be three here so if in in case we have any values it will be three so each index is now representing that how many flowers are currently in full bloom mode because we have done it through the indices now this is the same thing uh, which would have have happened had you traversed each of the intervals and added one what we did is is that we traversed the array only in the last instead of traversing it for each flower interval so this is a, a great technique to do these type of questions now here we have taken an example of an array now allocating the array for 10 to the power 9 size is not possible it says that start and end range from 10 to the power 9 so instead of an array we can take a map and see how we can utilize map uh, with the uh, with this approach so initially what i have done uh, so this is a this is a trick that i have used because uh, in the array we have continuous indices like 0 1 2 3 4 5 and all but uh, in map that is not there in map if we follow this approach then we'll have only have the indices uh, or only have the uh, key as the values which are present in the as the start value of each flower or at the as the end plus one because what what are the indices that will be putting in the map the, the, that will be either the start value as we saw in the array uh, in the array example below or it will be end plus one so these are the only possible values however it could be possible uh, it will be a highly possible case that the uh, person arrives at a particular point of time which is not present in the map because map is not continuous so for that i've used a trick what i've done is that i've added the time at which the person arrives so that these values are present in the map and when i'll traverse the map in the end i will have the values for each of these mentioned times otherwise i'll have to do that uh, what is the lower value uh, uh, if i compare the time at which person arrives and all so the easiest thing is that you add the values with value zero you add the arrival time of the person and it, just as we saw in the array we'll have answer for those particular times now if we use the same algorithm that we we discussed that we discussed so we traverse the flowers of length uh, they start and end time are given uh, we check whether the current value is present or not just for ease and then we add one to the current value that is present at the start index we add minus one to the current value that is present to the end plus one index is the same logic that we discussed for array we are using in map now again the last thing we did that we need to do is just traverse the map instead of array we traverse the map so we traverse the map this is the current value we see what is the current value we add it and then we update the value in the map so initially current is zero we keep on traversing we add the current value to current uh, to, to, to the total and then we update the current the current value with the total value that we have right now so this will give us the number of bloom flowers uh, at each particular point of time now all we need to do the, the trick that we used uh, at the top all we need to do is check because these values are present persons of i is present in the map we just need to assign the uh, value of from this map and then we are good to go uh, yeah so this was a hard level problem and the time complexity for this one is uh, linear time uh, hope you learned something new from this logic and see you in the next video bye bye